So you probably thought the overturning of Roe v. Wade was the ultimate victory for the pro-life cause, right? Wrong. If you haven't heard, the governor of Minnesota just signed the most extreme anti-life bill ever proposed into law, which will allow abortions all the way up until the moment of birth and protect child predators, which means we still have a lot of work to do to protect the innocent lives inside the womb. After Roe v. Wade was overturned last June, a common myth circulated in the media that this meant the total abolition of abortion across the country. But while I wish it did achieve that, all the Supreme Court ruling did was return power to the states to decide their own abortion laws. The good news means that states like Texas were immediately able to pass legislation that protected unborn lives. The bad news is that blue states are now doing exactly the opposite and abusing the power of their constitutions to make it untouchable. Minnesota Governor Tim Walz just passed a bill into law that he says would, quote, put up a firewall against efforts to reverse reproductive freedom. No matter who sits on the Minnesota Supreme Court, this legislation will ensure Minnesotans have access to reproductive health care for generations to come. This is a law Bishop Robert Barron describes as barbaric. But before I get into the specifics about it, I want to tell you its implications. The bill completely redefines the term reproductive freedom and enshrines into Minnesota law a right which cannot be revoked or overturned by any level of government in the whole state. Fully anticipating opposition to their anti-life agenda, the Democrats codified into their state law legal structures which would prevent Republicans at the local level from doing anything to restrict access to abortion. And when the governor says he wants to protect reproductive freedom, what does he even mean exactly? Well, let's look at the bill and find out. It's only a page long and gets right to the point. The bill completely redefines reproductive health care to mean, quote, health care offered, arranged, or furnished for the purpose of preventing pregnancy, terminating a pregnancy, managing pregnancy loss, or improving maternal health and birth outcomes. Reproductive health care includes but is not limited to contraception, sterilization, preconception care, maternity care, abortion care, family planning and fertility services, and counseling regarding reproductive health care. It then redefines reproductive freedom to mean the following. Every individual has a fundamental right to make autonomous decisions about the individual's own reproductive health, including the fundamental right to use or refuse reproductive health care. Every individual who becomes pregnant, has a fundamental right to continue the pregnancy and give birth or obtain an abortion and to make autonomous decisions about how to exercise this fundamental right. And before we get into what all this means, here's how the bill ends, which is the most horrifying part. Right to reproductive freedom recognized. The Minnesota Constitution establishes the principles of individual liberty, personal privacy, and equality. Such principles ensure the fundamental right to reproductive freedom. And finally, the kicker. Local unit of government limitation. A local unit of government may not regulate an individual's ability to freely exercise the fundamental rights set forth in this section in a manner that is more restrictive than that set forth in this section. Now that this bill has been signed into law, what exactly are local governments in Minnesota no longer able to object to? For one, they can't do anything to stop an abortion from being committed at any point in the pregnancy. And now minors have a right to an abortion and sterilization without parental consent needed. The following amendments proposed by GOP legislators in an attempt to slightly moderate this evil bill were all rejected. They include allowing mothers to provide anesthesia to a baby at the point in development when they can experience pain, preventing sterilization of minors when there is evidence of sex trafficking, requiring parental consent for abortions and sterilizations for people under 18, prohibiting elective abortions after 21 weeks, after 25 weeks, after 32 weeks, after 
36 weeks and prohibiting partial birth abortions and abortions when a woman is in active labor. In total, there were 65 amendments that were entirely rejected by Minnesota Democrats because not even one single life was worth saving. And of course, I want to give you some of my own thoughts about this new law and what an affront I think it is to call this reproductive freedom, especially as a woman who recently gave birth. It's completely manipulative to make it about reproduction, when in reality, this law just sanctioned the genocide of thousands of babies and made it a whole lot easier to be a sex trafficker in the state of Minnesota. When a woman considers committing an abortion, reproduction has already taken place. Reproduction occurs at the moment a couple creates an entirely new human being. If we were truly talking about reproductive freedom, the conversation would end there, at reproduction. It wouldn't carry on to include literally killing the person who was just reproduced. Human reproduction ends once another life is created, period. Abortion is the exact opposite of reproductive freedom, as to reproduce means to cause to exist anew, while abortion is a deliberate act to terminate a human life. And thankfully, once a couple reproduces a child, they have the reproductive freedom to do it again. It's not taken away, it's not hindered by the law, and no one is trying to interfere with it. Abortion is not a freedom of any kind. It's the action taken by a woman to kill her own child, who, again, she already reproduced. No one is proposing we take away the right for anyone to or not to reproduce. Women will never be forced to wear a red cape and be someone's handmaid, no matter how much feminists love fear-mongering and dressing up like characters from a Hulu show. And now that our terms have been clarified, I want to address the monstrous implications of this law towards the actual topic of reproduction. One of the many laws that was dismantled last summer and deemed unconstitutional by a Minnesota State District Court judge was a law requiring minors to obtain parental consent before receiving an abortion. Let me repeat that for you. It was deemed unconstitutional for a minor's parents to be notified of their child's desire to get an abortion. The most obvious thing that sticks out here is that parental consent is a thing for a reason. Minors simply cannot consent. And as I mentioned, Minnesota Democrats blocked GOP amendments to include parental consent in this bill, which means children under the age of 18 can legally obtain contraception and abortion and be sterilized, all without the knowledge or approval of their parents. Yes, you heard that right. Children whose bodies and minds are still developing and cannot even consent to sex can now legally make sexual decisions over their bodies and the bodies of others, independent of their parents' authority. This is so absurd on a number of levels, and before I address the more obvious concern here, I want to begin with the lesser known one. This law is an attack on the family and strips parents of their right to parenthood. This law makes the state the parents, gives them the only say, and there is nothing Minnesotans or their local governments can do about it. Overnight, this law took Minnesota a huge step closer to achieving the communist ideal of abolishing the family and making children the states to raise. Beyond this, let's talk about the more disgusting issue, that Minnesota Democrats have given a license for sex traffickers and child rapists to cover up their crimes. If no parent has to give consent, no parent has to ever know of their daughter's pregnancy. And how do minors who cannot consent to sex get pregnant? Hmm, from being raped. And why would little girls want to obtain contraception? To prevent a pregnancy because they are being raped. Laws like these are so harmful to children, not only those in the womb, but those who have been abused in the worst kinds of ways. Those children who were taken to abortion mills by sex traffickers to cover up their crimes so they can continue abusing them. Those children who need someone to speak up for them and provide help, 
not take the side of their rapist. Children can't even own property, enter into contracts, vote, marry, or have sex because they cannot give consent. But for some reason, pro-abortion people think that little girls can consent all on their own to taking birth control so that the sex they're having, aka the rape, doesn't result in a pregnancy. But if it did, they can just consent to kill the baby too. Why is this an issue beyond the fact that no one, not even a 12-year-old girl, has the right to kill her unborn child in any instance? It's an issue because this is a law that permits the worst kinds of abuse and encourages the cycle of abuse to continue. This law surely has sex traffickers and rapists praising Governor Walls for making their crimes easier to cover up. I feel absolutely terrible for parents in Minnesota who have lost their right to protect their daughters from sex crimes and even worse, for the young girls who will grow up in a state that makes it easier for them to be abused rather than loved. This law also permits abortion up until birth for any reason whatsoever. I have several videos here on this channel explaining why there is never a medically necessary reason for a woman to commit an abortion. So please go ahead and check those out if you want to learn more. I'm going to focus more on the hypocrisy that surrounds this concept. Now, even the pro-abortion side has a hard time justifying abortion up until birth. Most of them actually aren't in favor of that because it is so clearly wrong. It's much easier to advocate for the legal genocide of people too small to see, but when those same people are seven to nine months older and kicking their mother in the ribs, it would kind of make someone look like a raging, blood-hungry psychopath to advocate for their murder. But lo and behold, Minnesota apparently has 34 psychopaths in their Senate, 69 in their House, and one as their governor. Now, when questioned about this, supporters always tout that abortions that late never happen. You're fear-mongering. Well, okay. If they never happen, why permit it in the first place? Why not just cut off the term limit at some arbitrary week of gestation? Why? If it never happens, defend it so much. It simply just cannot be possible for late-term abortions to simultaneously not happen and need to be legalized. In fact, Minnesota joins Colorado, Maryland, New Jersey, Oregon, and Vermont in allowing abortions at any point in pregnancy. You know, I don't know. For something that doesn't happen, several states sure do think it's important to protect. It would be an injustice if I ended without showing you Governor Walz's tweets after he signed this bill into law. It made my jaw literally drop and my stomach turn out of the sheer disgust I have for this man. And here's why. Two days after legalizing the slaughter of thousands of babies, he tweets this, saying, Great to be in Duluth to discuss our plans to make Minnesota the best state in the country to grow up. We have a one-in-a-generation opportunity to invest in our schools, our kids and families, and our communities. The best state to grow up in? You just signed a bill into law that will prevent children from even growing up enough to take a single breath and getting to see Minnesota with their own eyes. And there's this tweet, which is just like... <sighs> During Black History Month, we acknowledge the generations of African Americans in Minnesota who have fought to achieve equal rights while recommitting to building a state that lives up to its democratic ideals to create a more just future for all. This man is either insanely naive or knows exactly how to passively boast about what horrors he's just committed. What an absolute disgrace to the generations of African Americans that will never exist, especially since the majority of Planned Parenthoods are located in predominantly black neighborhoods. I like how he mentions a just future for all. Moments after he signed away the most basic human right for innocent, precious little babies, the right to life. And for the icing on the cake, he tweets, we are sending a message that black Minnesotans deserve to live and work free from discrimination. <sighs> All laughing aside, as you can see, although Roe was overturned, 
The pro-life movement still has so much work to do. Before I end this video, I want to give you my takeaway because even amid horrors such as this, I know a lot of good can still come out of it. Firstly, the bill only passed by four votes in the Minnesota House of Representatives and by just one in the Senate. It won't take much to overturn this, and hopefully this horrid law will encourage Minnesotans to start flipping seats. And thanks to the extreme measures taken by Minnesota Democrats, I'd like to suggest for red states like Texas and Florida to do the exact same, but in reverse. What if, instead of heartbeat bills and laws that specifically target the act of abortion, we pass bills that recognize the dignity and the personhood of the unborn children in the womb? What if the right to life becomes untouchable for local ordinances to strip away? And what if we even work the right to life into state constitutions? I don't think red states should take for granted that they'll always be red, so they should be doing everything they can in their power to create as many legal protections as possible for unborn children, in case Democrats one day take power and use their simple majorities to sanction the genocide of the next generation. I deeply encourage you all to find ways to help locally to ensure no mother ever has the legal option to end the lives of her unborn children. Thank you guys so much for watching. May God have mercy on us and may our blessed mother pray for us.